In this video, we will be learning how to find the cubed root of an integer. Oh, I've never heard of a cubed root. What is that? A cube root will give a number that when multiplied by itself twice will give the answer. So, if the cube root of x is a, that means that a times a times a is equal to x. Now, an extremely important note about cubes and cube roots is that there can be negatives. Wait, how can a root have a negative? I thought roots were always positive. Unlike with squares, a negative number that is cubed will result in another negative number. The first two negatives will cancel each other out, but the third stays. So, if we see a cube root of a negative number, the answer will be negative. Okay, so how do I solve a cube root? When going about solving a cube root, the first step is to see if the number in the cube root is negative. If it is, we know the answer will be negative, and if not, the answer will be positive. Then, it is helpful to determine a range. So for example, if a question wants the cube root of 125, and we know that 2 to the third is 8, and 7 to the third is 343. Since 125 is between 8 and 343, the cube root will be between 2 and 7. To help with this, let's write out some integers cubed. Now, we can look at the problem and see that the solution to the cube root of 125 is 5, because 5 times 5 times 5 is equal to 125. And, as we can see, 5 falls in between 2 and 7. Okay, I think I get it, but what about negatives? A negative number cubed results in a negative of the positive number cubed. So, negative 6 cubed is equal to negative 216, the negative of positive 6 cubed. Now, let's go ahead and try a few examples. In this example, we are being asked to find the cube root of 27. I can see from the table that the answer is 3. Yes, you'd be correct. But let's pretend we don't know that, and practice defining a range and working backwards from there. We know that 1 to the third is equal to 1, and 5 to the third is equal to 125. So, since 27 is between 1 and 125, we know the answer will be between 1 and 5. Now, since 27 is closer to 1 than it is to 125, let's start by working our way upwards. 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8, which is too low, so we keep on going. 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 27, so our final answer is 3. This method of finding a range may not seem too useful now, but later on, when we take a cube root of a number that doesn't result in an integer answer, it will be useful for determining which two integers the answer will fall between. Let's go ahead and do one more example. In this example, we are being asked to find the cube root of negative 343. Why don't you go ahead and solve this problem? Okay, so we should start off by defining a range first, right? Yes, that would be correct. So I know that 5 times 5 times 5 is equal to 125, and 10 times 10 times 10 is equal to 1000. So our answer has to be between these two numbers. But since 343 is closer to 125, we should start there and work our way up. 6 times 6 times 6 is equal to 216 which is too low, so we need to keep going. 7 times 7 times 7 is equal to 343, which is the number we are looking for. So 7 is our final answer. But wait, since the number under the radical is negative, isn't our final answer negative? Yes, remember that a negative number cubed results in a negative of the positive number cubed. So here, our final answer will be negative 7. Okay, so I think I understood the process. So, when we're asked to find the cube root of a number, we have to determine what number multiplied by itself twice gives us the big number under the radical, right? Yep, that's right. 